Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a double pinwheel block using a paper piecing technique. So let's look at what the block looks like. Okay, in the center here, this purple fabric, I have a pinwheel. See, it's kind of spinning around here. And then if you look again really hard, look at the printed fabric, and it also is a pinwheel. So you have this pinwheel inside of a pinwheel, okay? Now, I used paper piecing to assemble this block. So this is what it looks like on the back. See all the paper on here? The re one of the reasons why I like to paper piece, if I'm making a complicated block and it's got a lot of detail in it, doing paper piecing makes it easier to keep everything in alignment and also makes every block the same and your seams lay flatter and smoother. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go over a technique that a lot of people use for paper piecing. And then I'm gonna show you how I do it. Mine's just a little different, okay. This is a five and a half inch square and I've drawn it on copy, photocopier paper, okay. I've drawn a diagonal line through the center and then another line here that only goes halfway through the center. There's a number in each area. This is number one, two, and three. This represents the order in which you put the paper on your blob, okay, and stitch it down. The normal way of doing paper piecing is you've got your lines on this side and on the back you place your fabric pieces, whatever you're using. And you line it up, you hold it up to the light and you look through the lines and try to line your fabric up. Then you flip it over to the front and stitch. Okay, that's too hard for me to keep trying to do that because I don't really see that well. Also, this thick paper is very hard to tear off later. So let me show you how I do it. And I think you're going to like my method just a little better. This is the kind of paper I use. Okay, you can buy it in a hardware store where they sell paint or just in any paint store. They're going to have painters uh, paper there. This is used for masking off areas when they're going to paint. This is six inches wide. So I'm going to cut off six inches this way and cut off the number of pieces that I'm going to need. I always make extra pieces just in case. So you're going to need four paper piecing pieces of paper for this block. Now, take your paper and draw your square on it and put a line on it. Now you're only going to draw it on one of the papers, not on both, just one. Draw all your lines, then stack all your paper up, okay, nice and neat and the same. Then go to your sewing machine, take the thread out of your needle, and stitch on these pencil lines all the way around and down through the center and then this smaller line here, okay? When you turn it over, you can see the lines all over. So you don't need to worry about holding it up, looking through the light and figuring out where your lines are. You've also made perforation lines, make it, making it easier to tear the paper off later. So that's why I love this technique. So let me show you how to do your first block. First of all, this is a five and a half inch square. Add one inch to whatever square you're making and that's the size of the squares I'm gonna cut out. So here's my two fabrics that I'm going to need in the two smaller areas for space areas one and two. I'm going to show you how to cut it. So take your ruler, line up it on your corners, and cut across this way with your rotary cutter. 
then go to the other corner don't not touching the fabric okay leaving exactly where it is and then cut again so now you will have pieces that look like this okay and you're going to need four of each of these for this particular block now let me show you how to cut out the fabric for area three here you go take your six and a half inch squares line it up on the corners and cut just once now you have the pieces you're going to need four of these for one block okay so now take your paper piecing all right turn it over on the back where the perforations are really heavy because what's happening is is when you stitch through this paper the needle pushes the uh, paper down and so it makes it a lot bumpier and it's easier to feel okay so areas one two and three take your fabric or excuse me one two and three take your fabric and place it right side up and you're going to be able to feel the perforations because it's very bumpy okay you want to line it up to where the fabric edge goes past this line and past this line and also past this line and it's real easy to do because you can feel it okay so this one is right side up take your next quarter square triangle place it on top right side down okay once you've got everything lined up put a pin on that line that only goes halfway through the center and then turn it over okay and you're going to stitch on that half center line right there like that when you're done this is what it's going to look like now everything looks crooked to you right now probably that's okay okay as long as your fabric goes out past those lines it doesn't matter how crooked this looks there it is on the back now take your fabrics open them up and finger press it down okay now take your other larger triangle piece like place it face down line it up on the edge here put a few pins across here turn it over whoops and stitch on this perforated line right here and when you're done it'll look like this okay I'll turn it over and there it is okay now unfold it and at this point I would press it with your iron at this point press it all now you need to make four of these for the pinwheel block your next step would be to square each block because now you need to get it to where it is five and a half inches so take your ruler here is my one and out here is five and a half okay and I usually put tape or little sticky notes so that I don't get confused later on all right and I put them along here and this is the area the size of your square that you want to make you want to take these two edges of your ruler and line it up on the perforation lines along the sides here and also the diagonal line here place it on top of this diagonal line okay so place those edges just on the inside of those perforation lines once you have it lined up you want to press really firmly down on this because the paper can be a little slippery and your ruler might slip and cut this side and then cut this side now you need to cut the other two sides so take the opposite corner flip it 
Now line the ruler up on those two edges. Line it up. Also line up your center diagonal line and then cut your last two sides. When you're done, it's gonna look like this. Okay? And there it is on the back. Okay, now, now we're gonna assemble all four blocks. So this is the order you need to place them in. Okay? So, and take the next one, and then this one, and then this one. Okay? And then there's your pinwheel block. Now you want to stitch a quarter of an inch seam to put them all together. So you're going to do it row by row. So take this one and put it on top. Line it up and then pin and stitch a quarter of an inch on this side right here. Then take the next one, place it on top, pin and stitch a quarter of an inch. Okay, and then open them up and then you're going to press the seams here and here and you want to press them to where they go in opposite directions. Okay, very important because when you go to bring the last two together, you want to be able to match your seams and it will be easier to match them if your seams are pressed in opposite directions. So, these two are stitched together and these two stitches are stitched together. Now take this row and bring it on top of this row. Okay, now remember, everything is stitched together in here. Now, pin and stitch along here, making sure that these center seams are going in opposite directions. After you stitched it down, you open it up and press it, and there you go. You have a really pretty pinwheel block. Now, some of the options for this block, there's a lot of things. You can make this into a pillow, put it on a tote bag, make a table runner, or even a full-size quilt. Now, some of the options are, if you want to make it into a quilt, is to take another color of fabric, cut two and a half inch strips, and put sashing around this block. And if you're not sure what sashing is, watch my video, Quilt Sashing Lesson 1, and it takes you step by step. So this is a great project for a beginner who wants to start quilting, because this process is really, really easy to do. Well, I hope that this information was helpful to you. Now, to keep informed on all my future videos, click on one of my subscribe buttons. There's one down there in the lower right-hand corner, and there's also one in the upper left-hand corner that pops up near the end of the video. It's a picture of me. Click on either one of those, and YouTube will, send, will actually prompt you for your email address. Enter that information, and the next time I have a new video, they'll send you an email, you click on it, it's got a big button in the center, click on that big button and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl, I'm really glad you came to my sewing room and see you next time and happy sewing.